In today's video, is what I want to do is I want to explain to you the power of your subconscious mind. So I want to break your mind down into two parts. And we're going to figure out the roles. And I'm going to tell you what the roles are of each part of our mind are. And we have your conscious mind, which is the analytical mind. It's the thinking mind. Attached to it is our sensory factors. We can see, hear, taste, touch, and smell. That is how we live. That is how the normal person lives their life. They go by what they see, taste, touch, and smell. The subconscious mind is below the conscious mind, but that's the part of the mind that does all the work, and it's like a tape recorder. Whatever we put into that subconscious mind, it plays back. Now, the subconscious mind doesn't care what you put, just like the tape recorder. The tape recorder doesn't really care what you put in it. You can just record whatever it is. The tape recorder cannot tell if you're recording something bad or good. It just records it. Same with our subconscious mind. It cannot tell what we're putting in it. But the conscious mind can. So what I think up here it goes down into my subconscious mind and gets recorded and played back, if you will. So I have to really pay attention to what I'm putting in my subconscious mind. Now, the thing with our sensory factors is we can see, hear, taste, touch, and smell. Those are always working. So whatever I'm seeing out and about during my day or doing whatever I'm doing, I'm seeing that. And my conscious mind's picking it up and it's putting it straight to my subconscious mind. So the same thing works with your mind, if your subconscious mind, if it's going to program that kind of thing, why not give it something to program, okay? Why let the outside circumstances control what that tape recorder, what that subconscious mind is recording and playing back? Why not input different information? Because I've been told that my subconscious mind doesn't know if it's real or if it's false. So why am I putting that stuff that I'm not liking over and over again? I'm letting my bank account, I'm letting my lifestyle, my relationships, my whole entire world is revolving around what I can see, hear, taste, touch, and smell. If I am out of shape or overweight, I am looking in the mirror every day and seeing this out of shape person, and that's what's being recorded, and that's what's playing back. Why not insert new information? And we do that through our intellectual faculties. So when we do that, we have reason, you have will, your imagination, your perception at our disposal to use to build the image up here and put that down to our subconscious mind to have it record what we really want so it plays back what we really want. But we don't do that because we're just creatures of habit and that's how we are... That's how we've been raised over and over again, seeing the same thing. So they have that uh, theory, the hamster in the wheel. Well, if I'm seeing, let's take for an example, um, a car. If I'm seeing a $4,000 car every day and I get in that car, I go home in that car, that's all I see. That's built in repetition. So that image is going down to my subconscious mind all day long, every day. And it's playing back every day. Well, that's what you own. That's what you drive, Chad. That's what you have. Now, if I want something different, why don't I insert the thought of something I would want? Now, when I do that, a few things got to take place. First and most important thing is it's got to create a feeling. So what kind of a feeling does a new car give you? Have you sat for a minute and quieted your mind and thought about what kind of car you would drive and what it would feel like if you had that car. Now, when we get into different laws, one of the main laws is the law of attraction. That is a secondary law to the law of vibration. What causes the law of vibration? Well, music, thoughts of something, the way something makes me feel, that causes a vibration inside of me and it's going to be more of a chance for it to be attracted to me because I'm on that frequency of that vibration or that thing that caused that vibration inside of me. Now, go back to what I said in the beginning. 
My subconscious mind has no idea if I really have that or not. It doesn't know. But it knows that the conscious mind looked at it and the conscious mind's liking it. So Easter Hicks has a great rule that I've always used and I love it. It's that 17 second rule. Whenever I can think of a thought for 17 seconds on the screen of my mind, another like-minded thought will follow. Now, how does that work? Well, let's take for an example, you, uh, you overthink something or you uh, really fester on something. What happens? That same thought is put in your mind and it's held there for 17 seconds. And then another thought and another thought. An example of that would be, let's say you have a fight with your friend or a fight with a spouse or a boyfriend or girlfriend. And they say something that upset you. So what happens? You put that up here and you think about it. And you hold that for 17 seconds automatically. You just don't, you don't think about it. And so after about 15, 20 minutes, the first said thing that they, that you didn't like about them or what they said about you has now disappeared. And now you have 20 other things on your mind going, yeah, that really, that guy really pissed me off. We don't let stuff go. You often see quotes and you see things out there, you know, let it go, let it go, let it go. We don't. Let's take example, a, a cat. When a cat is very comfortable and happy, what does a cat do? A cat purrs. So you know that the cat is in a good vibration when he starts purring because he's comfortable with his surroundings and he's very happy at that given time. If something comes along, let's say another cat or a dog or something that spooks the cat, puts him in a, uh, a flight or fight zone, what does the cat do? The cat stops purring and it gets defensive. It might arch its back, whatever it does. But in a few minutes after the danger clears and passes, the cat goes back and it might be purring again. He doesn't, keep, he doesn't hold on to things like us humans do. We hold on to things. So it's what I'm inviting you to do is hold on to what you want in life. Start doing writing. Get gratitude pads. Write it out. Get a mentor. That is like the key thing. Get someone who knows about this, who's been taught about this by somebody who did not teach them a bunch of fluff. I would love to show you what I'm talking about. And I would love to walk you through what I'm talking about because your results will change like that. That's how fast my results changed when I got mentored by Bob Proctor. So I'm going to leave a thing up here or... And I'll put them both. I'll put one in the comment too of the top 10 things you can start doing as of now to help you get onto that frequency of that vibration of what you want. And if you have any questions, let's dive in. Let's have a talk. Let's have a call about that conscious and subconscious mind because you have mental blocks that are holding you back from getting what you want and you have no idea they're even doing it. I sure as heck didn't have no idea my awareness has grown, and it's because of my awareness has grown that I am able to catch myself these days and understand. And one of the biggest aha moments I had when I got into the personal development field was I was able to figure out what I had done in the past when things went good for me. I was able to figure that out because that's exactly what I did. Now I know what needs to be done, I also know what I had done in the past, why that didn't work or why that did work. And I know going forward in the future, everything I do is going to work because it's by law. And that's another video for you too that I can make, the seven laws of the universe. And that's something that gets oftentimes misdirected. Nobody really knows about the seven laws. Not man-made laws because we have a lot of man-made laws. And I'm not condoning saying don't live by them because we have to. But there is natural laws of the universe. And one of them might be, one of the ones you probably only really know or been taught was the law of gravity. But there are seven different laws. And I'd love to sit down and I'd love to explain them to you. So my name is Chad. I'm at Unlock Wealth Consulting. And I'm going to put that list for you up here down below. If you like this video, please share it. Click like. Subscribe to my channel. And I'm going to also leave a calendar link. You can get a hold of me. It's a complete free phone call. Let's talk. Let's find out what you know, what you're doing, and where you want to go, and we're going to get you there. So thanks for watching.